What's going on guys? Bulls and the Bears here with a quick mobile update video for you. Tuesday in the books, the first day of the week, well market day, the first market day of the month, September. Historically not a great month. The fall is historically not a great season for the stock market. 2022's bear market accelerated before bottoming in October. So the fall was an ugly month before we bottomed in the fall. And then we, the bleeding stopped. 2023 was a nice bull market, but we had a multi-month pullback starting in the fall before we bottomed around October, November. Even before that, 2021, 2020, same thing, pulled back in the fall. It's something we got to be aware of and doesn't mean it's the end of the world. It just means there could be some sector rotation, profit taking you know, stuff, there's dips to be had. And it might not be a one week, a one day or a one week dip either. So be mindful of that. It could last a little longer. You could be in for some multi-month pain possibly. Uh, but it typically reverses and bounces back. So just be aware of that. The positions are looking horrible. Clean spark down here, 300 shares, down 1,000. Really, really horrible because this was over 1050 on Friday close last week, um, I just I was just assigned on puts last week to bring my average down to twelve dollars and thirty three cents on three hundred shares. You can see here, an average of twelve thirty three with a price of ten fifty of Clean Spark that we saw at the end of Friday. That is doable for me to sell calls. I could sell the twelve fifty call, maybe even the thirteen dollar call for the end of the month and get really good premium. When with 300 shares, I could sell three contracts, it'd be great. Well, that's if Clean Spark was at 1050. Today, it didn't even give me a chance. It just immediately fell and it fell more and kept falling and still falling. And now we're below nine bucks, just like that. Now we're at nine bucks. So yeah, I was hoping to sell calls today. Didn't get that opportunity because they just withered away and dried up the premiums. Terrible, terrible, terrible. So down 1,000 on 300 shares, but I don't have a full position yet. The full position would be 500 shares. And I have that basically working right now with another two puts sold at $9. So you can see here, these puts, I sold two of them for the end of the month though. So we have some time, uh, but right now they're at the money and it's not looking good. So if I gotta, I gotta prepare and, and um, plan to be assigned. That's how I have to think about this. So if I get assigned on these $9 puts, I'll have 500 shares at an average of $11. And that would be a full position. Once I have a full position, from there, if the stock gets really bad, then I enact my emergency protocol and double the position one final time. So I'd go from 500 shares to 1,000 shares if the stock really drops far below my average. And it's already pretty far below my average. If it was, if my 500 share average would be 11 and clean sparks at eight something, that, that's pretty bad. That's gotta be at least 20, 30%. And that would enable me to enact my emergency protocol and double the position, which I already have set up here by selling five $7 puts right here. So assuming I get assigned at nine, I would have 500 shares, which meant, or which, which caused me to then already set up my emergency double down at seven. I sold five puts, got 16 cents a piece for the end of the month, just like my $9 puts, they expire at the end of the month and uh, we're set up there. So if Clean Spark really does finish the month below seven, I will have a completely maxed out emergency protocol enabled, whatever position of a thousand shares at an average price of nine bucks. That would be my full absolute max position, a thousand shares at $9. So that's what's set up. It's set up to be that way. If clean spark really does take a dump this month, but obviously all those puts could expire worthless if it bounces, you know, and then I still just have my 300 shares and then maybe I can sell calls against them a little bit soon, you know, like later this week, maybe next week, we'll see, but not looking good there. Celsius down 800 bucks. I have two leaps there. Um, I do have some covered calls against them. You can see that up here. Where is it right here? 
up 58 bucks. So the calls are printing, obviously. Um, my snowflake leaps down 700 on that. I actually added to this today. You can see down here. I bought an additional call contract, just added to the existing one that I already had, the $100 call for next June, bought it for $26.50. So now I have two calls at an average of $26.43. And I'm sorry, no, an average of 30. The current price is $26.43. The average cost is 30. So about three grand per contract, that's 6,000 total. Full position in Snowflake, down 700 bucks. I did sell some calls against this. Um, I actually locked up some, I closed a covered call that was profitable today and then opened new ones here. I sold two contracts for 24 bucks for this week. So it expires this week. Well, there's only a few days left. So, um, that would be about almost 50 bucks premium if I can lock that up this week. I also bought an NVIDIA leap. I went back to NVIDIA. I bought a couple leaps with NVIDIA after the carry trade market crash, you know, that, that really quick 5% drop. I bought a little bit on, on NVIDIA on that drop. It obviously went up. I closed it for a profit. It was a relatively quick trade. I made about like $400 all of a sudden done with NVIDIA on that dip buy. And here I am buying the dip again. You already know NVIDIA had a rough day. It's down 9.5% right now. If we go to NVIDIA, even after hours, just horrible. 9.5% intraday, down another 2% after hours. Not good. This NVIDIA leap is already down 200 bucks. I bought it today. That's crazy. But it's NVIDIA, so I don't feel too terrible about it. I sold a covered call against it up here. It's already up 49 bucks. I collected $123. I'm already profitable by $50 or so. That's cool, but I'd rather have NVIDIA go up, right? I do have the opportunity or the option, the ability to add to it if uh, NVIDIA drops further, which it already is. Because this position, my leap, is uh, about 3300 bucks. That's about a little more than half of a full position. So I can buy one more contract, double down one time, and, and then I'd have a full position. So I can average down once on this thing, which I would like to do. And that would be, uh, be a full position there. And that's really it. We talked about Clean Spark already. So I actually did have a pin duo duo trade that I closed today. That's why you don't see it here. And that's why I have NVIDIA. So PDD, the Chinese online discount retailer, you know that, um, I closed that today because it had a decent day today. It was up about a percent, percent and a half. And uh, I, although I did sell covered calls against the position, the leaps were profitable by a good amount, offsetting the loss in the covered calls. And I closed that all for a profit. So that's done. And uh, locked that up, locked up some gains, freed up a position in the account, and that's what turned into NVIDIA. I think we can all be pretty comfortable with NVIDIA over PDD, in my opinion. But we'll see. I don't. I, I, the only thing is I don't actually, I don't have that much time with, with this leap with NVIDIA. June 20th, 2025, that's less than a year. PDD, on those leaps, I had like a year and four months. So quite a bit of... Uh, Quite a bit less time on these contracts, but I mean, that's a long, it's still a long time, like eight months or whatever it is. That's still a long time. A lot can change in just a couple weeks. So uh, I'm not too worried about that right now. But yeah, this is the account. Not a good day, almost down a thousand, and the market's just beginning to roll over. You know, if you look at Spy's chart, I don't have it up here, but and Robin Hood charts are not good. But the S&P, it consolidated for a little while at a, at a peak. Kind of, let's see. Yeah, well, this is horrible. I hate their charts. It's so bad. But you can see this consolidation up here in this range for, you know, about a week, week and a half. And now we've cracked that support. And it's possible we could come all the way back down possible I'm not saying it's going to happen but it's possible this consolidation up here it's being it's being broken right now and we're heading down so something to watch out for obviously we already talked about how this the seasonality effect and then the election and the interest rate cuts and everything the fed's going to do very volatile times lots of uncertainty you could have some panic sellers some profit takers 
Who knows? And then there's going to be earnings too. What's going to happen with the next round of earnings? Is that going to only, only uh, you know, amplify the whole sell-off? Is it going to make investors want to sell even more? Or who knows? Maybe it stops the bleeding because companies are actually still doing well and it shows that investors were just overreacting. I don't know. But that's the state of the account. I'll be back tomorrow with a midweek update video, more formal, obviously, and we'll recap all this stuff and see what the markets are looking like and all the good charts and bad charts and all that. All right, guys, thank you. Enjoy your day, and I'll see you all next time.